This is worksheet number four of the gas laws packet, and in this worksheet we are going to be graphing Boyle's Law. So in previous worksheets you have already learned the conceptual ideas behind Boyle's Law, that pressure and volume are inversely related at a constant temperature, and you have learned how to use the different variations of the Boyle's Law equation. But in order to really understand the relationship between the two variables, it is helpful to graph a set of data. So what you have in front of you is a set of data. There are actually 19 total data points that you're going to graph. And in our graph, pressure is going to be the independent variable here. And volume is going to be the dependent variable. So we need to make sure, and this is what we're going to work on together here, uh, to label the axes and include a title. Um, and then when you come to class, we'll actually plot the points and answer the follow-up questions. So um, here, if you take a look at the data first, our pressure values are pretty straightforward to graph, right? 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, also on so forth into the next column. We have four and a half and five, into the next column, eight, eight and a half, all the way up through ten. Not really difficult to graph, okay? Uh, the volume information, though, is a little bit more tedious to graph because it has some sort of uneven, difficult decimals. And so I would encourage you to just round these to the nearest whole number. Your graph will still be plenty accurate enough, um, and you should be able to answer all the follow-up questions. So, like if we looked at 73.35, we want to round to the nearest whole number. Well, let's look at that first decimal. Normal rounding rules say that if it's less than 5, we would just round this down to 73. 48.9, well, that first decimal is 5 or higher, so we're going to round this up to 49. So on and so forth. All right? Okay. So I think at this point we want to turn the page uh, to, all right, so I'm going to kind of overlay a little image of your graph paper. Um, and we want to label our axes first. Please do this with me. Okay, down here, um, now I'm going to have to, oops, excuse me. Um, I'm going to have to write a little bit smaller, right? But you want to leave plenty of space because we're going to put numbers on these axes. Um, but this is going to be pressure here in units of atmospheres. Okay. Um, and our in, or excuse me, our dependent variable along the y-axis is going to be volume. And that's going to be in liters. All right, and we always want to put a title on our graph, so we could call this Boyle's Law, we could call this also um, pressure versus volume, either of those is fine, okay? All right, so we've got this little graph sort of set up, now we need to look at our number line. Um, I would really recommend along the x-axis, the pressure axis, that each hatch mark be worth 0.5, since you've got a graph 1 and 1.5, 2, 2.5, like that. So here's going to be 0, right? This would be 1, Let's skip, make this 2, skip another line, make it 3, so on and so forth, because that way each little hatch mark uh, will be worth a half point. And um, you need to do this all the way up until you get to 10. Okay? Um, now, along the y-axis, you need to get all the way up to 70. So to fit that on your graph, you're not going to be able to spread your numbers out quite as much as pressure. Uh, so I would make each line worth 2. All right, so you'd have 2, 4, 6, 8, and this would be 10... 12, 13, 14, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, I promise I can count by twos, uh, so on and so forth, all the way until you get up to 70. And if you use these numbers that I'm suggesting, you should be able to have a nice spread out graph 
um, where you're actually going to be able to see a relationship between the numbers. Um, now, it is really important once you're done plotting all the points, which you can do in class, um, that you use a ruler to connect them. Okay, I don't want these wiggly, squiggly, sloppy lines. All right, I want this to be a nicely constructed, well-plotted plot so that you have um, some nice data and you can think about the relationship between the variables. Okay, so when you come to class next, we will plot these and answer the follow-up questions.